their single stats say? They just want the team victory to mean more. All three of those players averaging well over 15 points per game. Michaela Perdue, 17 a game last year. Maples, 16 a game last year. Destiny Leo, unfortunately, missed the majority of that season last year. The last 28 games with injury, but she averaged about 21 a game in her first six games. So, man, it's going to be exciting to see her come out here and play ball. And you talked about Destiny Leo. She missed those 28, 29 games. She still went 40 of 40 from the free throw line, averaged 21 points, had 10 steals, averaged about two rebounds and assists per game. So in the games that she played, she was extremely, extremely crucial to the way that the offense was run. She certainly was. Cleveland State, 29 and 6 last year, lost to Green Bay in the Horizon League Championship game, and went to the women's basketball equivalent of the NIT, just to keep it in simpler terms. The women's basketball national invitational as Asia Petty wins the tip for Ohio State and Jelani Cambridge at the keys for the Buckeyes in her first game of college action. Buckeyes working it around theory in her senior season with the Buckeyes. Can look to get Asia Petty a lot of post touches and misses her first chance as a Buckeye. And Asia Petty has been playing in the SEC level for so long. Two years with Kentucky and two years prior with LSU. She's a back-to-basket dominant big. Expect her to go for a lot of shots like that in the paint. Averaged about 14 and 11 as there's a shot from the top of the key. Michaela Perdue starting things out with Mikes. And are you really surprised Michaela Perdue, she led the Horizon League in three-pointers made last year with 83 of them. She's not afraid to let it go anywhere beyond the arc. One of the best shooters on the team and even in the conference. Cambridge operating mid-range pull-up. That's cash. First collegiate points for Jelani Cambridge. And you talked about her early on in the open. The number two recruit coming out of the country, heading into college and able to play with her sister, Kennedy, as well. Kennedy Cambridge on the bench wearing number three for the Buckeyes as there's the first turnover of the game committed by Cleveland State. Destiny Leo was looking to the corner. And partner, Ohio State likes to run a press-heavy team, especially defensively. And we talked to Coach McGuff, of course, a very young team, a couple of transfers in there with Petty and with Gray. And he said, look, pressing at 94 is not going to happen all the time, but we're still going to try to speed teams up and force those turnovers when they had almost 14 averages against the opponents. Patty spins and finishes her first points as a Buckeye. And back to basket, big plays expected here down in the post, especially when she's going against Jordana Reisma. 6-3. Three. three ball right wing. No good. McMahon cleans up the rebound up the right side in a hurry. She's going to be tough to stop going downhill, as is Cambridge pulling up and cashing in again. The freshman, four early points. And the way that they, those two play in Cambridge and in McMahon, they're strong to the cup. Purdue misses, cleaned up by Reisma, missed the follow. Here comes McMahon again. Cody McMahon, junior season into Petty again, and she walks with it. And that's going to happen. We talk about how Asia Petty's six foot three. She's going up against Jordana Reisma, who's also 6'3". They have played against each other and against different players at all levels. Of course, now it's only been a couple of touches that they've played against each other in this one. But when you go in the, the Horizon League or into the SEC season, you're facing some big men down in the paint. They're not afraid to play you tough. First turnover, fours theory in the paint. And that press is so hard to get through. And they're going to keep doing it. I mean, you see it right now, and watch it go again. Petty, one, two, step to the rim. She's fouled. And she'll take her first free throws as a Buckeye. Partner, I'm going to ask you a question. How often do you see the five on the floor playing press at 94 feet? Normally, you expect them to be back in the opposite side front court preparing for a fast break. You don't see it often, but when you have someone with the athleticism of Asia Petty, you can make that happen. And the Buckeyes, strong defensively, forcing three early turnovers. Petty's first free throw rolls out. A couple minutes ago, Cleveland State made the first substitution of the game. Grace Ellis came in for Destiny Leo. I think they might be trying to move Leo on a little bit slower, just coming off that injury last year. I mean, it makes sense. When you miss almost 30 games after being one of the most ball-dominant point guards in the Horizon League the year prior, you have to slowly get her in there. And Grace Ellis was the sixth woman off the bench for the Vikings last year, played in all 35 games, including a start. 
Guerrero with it, right wing, pull up three, banked in. Six points on two threes for the Vikings. That did not look like it was going to go off the window for the way she released that. That high arcing release, couldn't tell. It was outside of the square on the backboard as well. Two for three from deep for Cleveland State so far. There's Chance Gray looking for a teammate. Cambridge driving, floater. In again, Jelani Cambridge. What a start for her. Has that shooter's touch, and the way she plays, she's not afraid to be aggressive, even as the freshman out of Nashville, Tennessee. Turnover force, Cambridge outside, Chance Gray first three, rims out, rebound Ellis. I like the aggression of Ohio State playing into the paint, going headstrong to the cup, forcing turnovers like that, and also not being afraid to distribute the ball and try to find some threes. Quick turnover for Purdue. Paulina Fernandez checking into the game, and Destiny Leo back in the game as well for Cleveland State. Carly Howard coming into the game as well for Grace Ellis. So a lot of subs early for Chris Kilsmeyer's team. And that was a question that you had to look for on his team was, hey, how deep are you going to go into this bench against Ohio State? And he even said, we had an exhibition a couple days ago. It was against Edinburgh U, one of the best D2 teams in the country. And he said, we didn't play the game we wanted to. Big swat down low by Fernandez all over that one. Pass out to the wing, Purdue, three ball, in and out. Petty with the rebound. And talking about the way, he said, look, if we play that way against Ohio State, we're not going to be able to win. We're not going to be able to play competitive and as congruent as we want to. And he said, look, I've been coaching for a long time, 25 plus years. We've been coaching as a team and practicing as a team for over a year. These two practices that we had this past weekend were some of the best I've seen all season. But when you have a player going downhill like Taylor Theory, one on four in the paint, as many practices as you have, you're probably going to get a foul on that. And you saw the first time Taylor Theory went down low. Paulina Hernandez was right there to meet her at the summit. Great defense on her part. But Theory not afraid to go back. Cleveland native here in Columbus in her fourth year with the Buckeyes. All Big Ten type player. Catches in on that second free throw. Another turnover forced by the Buckeyes. Gray throws it up and misses. Leo with the rebound, but taken right back by Gray. Here's Theory again, off glass and in. They're not afraid to play strong and play the, the way that they always do. That's that Buckeye defense. They are glued together on you. They won't let you get an opening. Cleveland State having a hard time with the press. That one goes straight to Cambridge. Out to McMahon, catch and shoot, three, rattles in. Buckeyes pouring it on early. McMahon, the way she played, and we got the opportunity to watch her last year, partner, seeing her look that confident on a three-pointer is a big boost for Coach McGuff. Guerrero penetrating, takes it back. Here's Howard driving left, fakes. And Cody McMahon tried to rip the ball away. It's going to stay over there. And the way that Cody McMahon has been going about her time in college, she's now a junior. She's been playing at such a high level since her freshman year coming out of Centerville High School. She had the opportunity to play with Team USA in the three-on-three. -three. And that is a type of basketball very different from normal five-on-five. -five. You have to be prepared to guard your person on an island. If they get past you, it's bad news. And you can already see from McMahon the way she's stalking out her prey, so to speak, on defense. She's not afraid to go one-on-one. -on -one. Hernandez step through, misses. Almost snared the rebound, but just caromed off that left hand. And you can already see just based on the points itself, Ohio State on an 8-0 run and 17-3 run for the last four minutes. There have been eight turnovers in the last four and a half minutes for the Vikings. Asia Petty to inbound to Jelani Cambridge. Impressing early for the Buckeyes who are on a 17-3 run. Petty in the lane, swatted by Hernandez. Swatted again! Paulina Hernandez, what a stand. And here comes Cleveland State. That's great defense down low there, partner. Surveying outside, Guerrero. Getting a lot of early touches on the perimeter for Cleveland State. She's been playing well. She shot almost 50% from there last year. Purdue misses. Howard on the follow, rolls off the rim. A lot of second chance opportunities for Cleveland State, but nothing doing on the majority. 
Cody McMahon into the paint. Jumper no good. And here comes Purdue down that left side. Trying to penetrate on the freshman. And Cambridge, she knocked it away. It stays with the Vikings. She's not afraid to play very strong and very confident with the way she always does. And I mean, it's been a good five and a half minutes. And she already has six points and is three of three with three steals. Those are numbers you cannot make up in six minutes of play. She's been an absolute pest defensively. And the Buckeyes off to a hot start. 17-6, man, with three points. She scored her 1,000th career point in the Buckeyes' last game last year in the round of 32 against the Duke Blue Devils, and she was just honored getting the ball from that game. And that was a Duke team that was very tough defensively, and they played her very strong, went to her strengths, which is driving to the cup and being that slasher that Coach McGuff wants. And from that point forward and with her time with Team USA and three on three, you could see she's felt a little bit more comfortable with that jump shot. We saw her. She's made one three so far and two rebounds. Expect her to shoot a little bit more outside the arc. Pair of subs in the game for Ohio State. Elsa Lemila getting her first action as a Buckeye and Kennedy Cambridge the same after redshirting all of last year. Take missed by Colby Maples. Here comes Cambridge. Jelani out to McMahon. Wide open for three off the right side of the rim. Cleveland State back on the break. Here comes Guerrero hard into the paint. And Lamila making her presence felt early. Kennedy Cambridge up ahead for McMahon. Lays it in with the contact. When you talk about transition, you have Lemmy Law getting her first licks of college play, and then you completely flip it right back over. Everyone thought it went out. Kennedy Cambridge goes, I see Cody McMahon up there. Let me take the contact and go off the window. McMahon, someone who uses her strength often in the paint, but a lot of finesse on that finish. And that's the way to do it. Completes the three-point play. Press heavy as ever. Chance Gray in the passing lane kicks it over to Kennedy Cambridge. Back to her sister, Jelani. First post touch for Lemila. Goes right side, swatted by Paulina Hernandez. Her fourth block of the game. I mean, my goodness, she had 11 just last year. She's almost halfway there, and it hasn't even been the first quarter of the first game of the season. She's been a rock in the paint. In Cleveland State so far. I mean, 26 games played at her freshman time last year. Getting involved heavy against Elsa Lemila and Asia Petty for the Buckeyes. She's not afraid to go down low with their, their big player package in the front court. Purdue spin move draws some contact, and this will be the first time a Viking has gone to the line. Buckeyes out number three, Kennedy Cambridge. You can only hope that it's going to help them at this point end that scoring drought. It's almost been four full minutes. I mean, you see Purdue cut to the lane, get that contact on Chance Gray. She shot 77% from the line last year. Strong, strong take for Purdue as well. Gets a lot of her production from beyond the arc. Hit 83 three-pointers last year. Top 30 in the nation in that mark. 38% from the line. Cash is in on free throw number two. Jelani Cambridge in a hurry. Chance Gray, the Oregon transfer. Played two years there. Buckeyes moving the ball around. But McMahon throwing it straight to Guerrero. Got a chance on the break. Firing it left side. Purdue contested three off back rim. Now the Buckeyes are running. Cambridge pull up Jay. In there again, four for four, Jelani Cambridge. And she's got a smooth touch already. You cannot complain about that as a freshman getting out there with her teammates and feeling comfortable. Maples finds Guerrero. Buckeyes up big early. Guerrero pull up. No good. Two for 13 on the night for Cleveland State. Gray fakes, drives, finds Lemila, lays it in, her first Buckeye points. And that is the beauty of team-led basketball. As you play the perimeter for so long, that's what the Vikings think you're going to do. Try to find a three, and you cut it right back down to Lemila on the post. Howard with the drive, throws it up, miss. 
Loving the low, another rebound. She looks really comfortable out here, Connor. Charge call, Jelani Cambridge going straight into the chest of Maples. Handful of subs on either side. Ava Watson getting her first action as a Buckeye coming in. Madison Green, the veteran point guard in as well. Three guards out there for the Buckeyes. And you can see it was just a good time to let Kennedy and Jelani Cambridge go rest their legs for a little bit. Get Ava Watson and Madison Green involved. I'd be interested to see here, partner, who's going to be playing the two? Who's going off ball? Jordana Reisma in the game as well for Cleveland State. Purdue stripped by Green. Stays on the Vikings side of the court. You could make the guesstimate that Madison Green is going to be running point and trying to help Ava Watson feel comfortable off the ball and get some of her first shots up. We talked to Kevin McGuff today, and he raved about her shooting ability coming out of high school. Average of about 25 a game. Number 43 prospect nationally, Madison Green. Colby Maples up top. Horizon League Player of the Year last year. Drives left, stripped. Kennedy Cambridge has it. Right down the lane, running over Purdue. This one goes right back to Cleveland State. So a pair of charges pretty early. They've drawn two of almost back-to-back -back defensive plays. And that's because Ohio State is quick downhill. And that's when we talked to Coach McGuff about it earlier. He said, hey, look, this team, they're not afraid to play fast and be aggressive. But with that comes these unwanted turnovers on charges. Stuck in the backcourt is Cleveland State. Time running out, 21 seconds. They just make it across midcourt in time. Purdue drives, lay is good off the window. I mean, that was close. That was by the skin of your teeth, just getting past that timeline right in the middle. Green slowing the pace down. Buckeyes moving the ball well today. Nice cut by Watson, misses the layup. Here comes Guerrero down the right side. Veteran, a graduate at Cleveland State. Ripped again. Purdue's got it, goes right back to Guerrero, who again has been seeing a lot of touches early. Pull up three, off the window, no good. Wonder if Ohio State holds for this final shot of the first. The shot clock's off, it's final 20. You can see McGuff, he's waving out the signals from beyond half court. He's telling everybody to spread and let Madison Green go for that final ISO shot. Green matched up against Purdue. Gets the double screen over to Kennedy Cambridge. Three seconds, tries to find Lemila with 2.2 left. It was tipped away, so it'll stay on that side. Buckeyes should get the final shot. I think you want to go over the top, try to find Lemmy La if you can, but look at the way Jordana Reisman is playing defense. Gonna be tough to do it. Green gets it into Lemmy La and rejected at the rim by Jordana Reisma. And the Buckeyes with a dominant first quarter of action. Final takeaways from that one, Austin? That's the Ohio State team we've been seeing for a long time. They play aggressive, they're feisty, but then on the other half, you can get them on a scoring drought, and then it's going to take a lot for them to get back into it. Quick break as we move on to the second quarter. We'll be back in a second. Ohio, Ohio State up 15 after the first quarter. Cleveland State 9, Buckeyes 24. Cleveland State, it's a cold start today's game, but last year they had an incredible season, their first time ever as the Horizon League regular season champs, Austin. I mean, partner, they were on a burner, 29-6. and six. One of their biggest losses was to an Iowa team that, I mean, come on, guys, if you're watching women's hoops, you know about the dominance of Iowa, but 18-2 and two in Horizon League play. They were ball dominant, and that was even without Destiny Leo for more than 70% of that season and projected to do very much the same in 24-25. And they lost in the Horizon League Championship game against Green Bay, another very formidable opponent in that conference. Theory probing, scoop lay, rebounded by Petty, puts it back up, rebounded by Leo. Good defense down low. Asia Petty was open to start the play. Oh, nice pass in there from Leo to Reisma for the finish. 
Cleveland State opening things up with a bucket. She's had five double-doubles in her career and a career high of 18 points at IUPUI. So Reisman's not afraid to play both sides of the ball and really be dominant while doing it too. Cleveland State employing a zone defense look. Looks like a 2-3 to start this second quarter and cause a little bit of chaos. Cambridge pull up three, <laughs> nothing put net. She's five for five, Austin. I mean, how do you stop her at this point? You talk about that 2-3 zone. You may want to start bringing somebody up just in case. The Buckeyes get the takeaway. Gray, left corner, Cambridge, six for six. She's on fire. I mean, keep letting them rip. Why don't you? You keep getting these turnovers and feel really confident. 14 points. And the answer from Michaela Purdue. Pull up Jay. She is not afraid to go and get you a bucket. I mean, partner, it started with the end of that first with the Buckeyes on a two and a half minute scoring drought. And then they went on a 6-0 run in 10 seconds. Chance Gray pull up three, rims out. And bounces out of bounds. It'll stay with the Buckeyes. I mean, how often do you see freshmen feeling so confident, looking so confident, not being afraid to play the game that they did in high school and then continue to do it at the Power 5 and Division 1 level? She's on to inbound, played her high school ball at Montverde in Florida, her final year. Number two player in the nation. Petty spins, loses it. Cleveland State has it. Guerrero up ahead for Purdue. The graduate, Purdue, working on McMahon, gives it up for Leo. Vikings moving it around. Maples, pull up three, back rim. I like the way that they're patrolling the perimeter, but they got to try to cut inside and find the weaknesses in the defense. And they luckily get a turnover on that one and maybe have the chance to do it. They're playing around the perimeter, and that's what you want to do. You want to try to cut into this lead as quickly as you possibly can. But being too aggressive beyond the arc, Connor, that could allow a team to not have any chances to go down low. And Jordana Reisma is down there, and she's dominant. She's going one-on-one -on -one against Asia Petty. Here comes Guerrero finishing with the hanging layup. And that's beautiful. That's exactly what you got to do. You find the opening, you coast your way into the left side of the lane, and he's an easy lay. Cambridge finds Gray. McMahon back to Jelani Cambridge. I think it's an offensive foul. Cambridge going to turn it over. A moving screen, I believe, on Taylor Theory. She didn't set her left foot and decided to move it quickly. But I like the way that Ohio State is playing. When we talked to Coach McGuff earlier, and the question was, what kind of lineup are you going to run here? And hey, look, Asia Petty's playing there, but you also have Taylor Theory, who's playing the four. She's six foot one and very good defensively, just unable to set her feet. And luckily, they get it back on a travel. Rizma walks with it. In theory, a strong rebounder as well, around five to six boards a game from the small forward slash power forward position, kind of a tweener type of player. It, it's odd because the way basketball is being played now, and I know you and I can somewhat agree on this, the, the traditional one to five doesn't really exist anymore. You can play three guards. You can run four guards even if you want to. Gray from the corner bounces out in a tussle on the rebound. Goes to, Pens goes to Cleveland State. And you can see the field goal differential, 6 of 20 for CSU and 12 of 27 for OSU. Maples with it, trying to break the press, and quickly a whistle. Cambridge fouled Maples. She was trying to advance. That's her second foul, and it's five to foul outs in women's college hoops. So just something to keep in mind is there's still seven minutes to go in the second. Got to stay out of foul trouble, and other than that, she's been incredible. Purdue had some space, but the pass hit her in the foot and rolled out. And if you look at the way that the current trends have gone in this, Buckeyes have three turnover, turnovers in the past two minutes, and their scoring drop is also the exact same time as that. So something to keep in mind, if you're Cleveland State, they found the weaknesses while driving to the paint, and their defense has been very stuck together the past couple minutes. They've got to turn it on offensively, though. Petty, post-touch, reverse, rolls in there. And a great play for Petty, but somebody at the scorer's table, Macy Fagan, 
the five foot 11 forward. She might come in and try to be a pest down low and give Rizma a couple minutes off. Coming in for the first time this game, and Chris Kilsmeyer using a good bit of his lineup. We've seen a lot of players come in. He actually took out Michaela Perdue to give her a couple minutes off, and by doing that, Fagan's 5'11". She's four inches taller than the Springfield, Ohio guard. So with her coming in, that's 10 players used today by Chris Kilsmeyer's squad. It's a deeper bench for this Vikings team, and it has to be against the number 14 team in the country who can play deep and play aggressive. Fagan found Maples on the wing, blocked by Cambridge. Her impact has been on both sides of the ball tonight, Austin. I mean, if you could tell me, hey, somebody put up 14 on 6 and 6 shooting, 2 for 2 from beyond the arc, 3 rebounds, She's got an assist in there. She's got two blocks and four steals in 12 minutes. These are numbers you don't see from grad students, let alone a freshman. And in the time she's done it, the impact is immense. Ray over to Cambridge. Nice pass inside for McMahon. Spins off back rim. More solid defense from the Vikings. They've looked really good picking it up recently. Maples loses it, gets it back, and finishes off the box. You don't write those plays up. That's just lucky that a pinball's back to you and you get the twist and flick as you fade away. Cambridge pull up three. Her first miss of the ball game, six for seven. That just tells you how well she's been playing. I think that's a pretty good start to your collegiate career. Maples ball tapped away for a second by Gray. Out at the halfway point in this quarter. Maples operating the offense cross court. Fagan, the sophomore, getting a chance. Here comes Reisma. Time running out in the shot clock. Leo driving, takes contact. And they're going to say that's a charge. Good defense down low, getting into the restricted area. Cody McMahon's really good at doing that as well. She's drawn them in some big games, mainly Iowa last year here at the Schottenstein Center. It was getting to a point in that fourth quarter where it looked like it was going to go bad to worse, and a turnover on great defense from McMahon helped the Buckeyes win that game, and she's been doing that in her three years with the Buckeyes. 14 turnovers for Cleveland State so far, and that's always been Ohio State's M.O. under Kevin McGuff. Force turnovers. Average 13.3 just last season. Scoop lays good for Taylor Theory. Up to seven points on the night. Taylor Theory is one of those players that you're going to look at her play and go, I wonder what kind of stat line she has. And then you blink and you go, my goodness, she has a sneaky eight points, two blocks, and three rebounds while doing it. Guerrero misses the three. Here come the Buckeyes in the passing lane. Maples stays with the Buckeyes. A couple of subs, Paulina Hernandez and Michaela Perdue come in as there's a timeout called quickly. Buckeyes up 34 to 17. And we'll go to a quick break here on Big Ten Plus. 17, but they've been stopping the offense a little bit more of Ohio State in the second quarter. And you talk about that winning mentality for Chris Kilsmeyer on his side. He understands they're down. He realizes that you are somewhat David against Goliath. You're going against an Ohio State team that has pushed its way through the epicenter of women's college hoops, one of the best teams that go in and cause havoc. And he said, look, that we have some mottos for this team. This one is level up. We realize it's going to be a tough game and a tough season against teams like this, but sometimes it's going to help you out and do that. And they're going to try to level up against the Buckeyes. And with Cleveland State, after the season that they had had and the way that they've come out here strong, as much as they're down, they've been playing very, very consistent defense moving forward. Triggers in to Lemila. Back to Jelani Cambridge. Ebony Walker's in the game for the first time for Ohio State. Cambridge fakes right, goes left. McMahon wide open, cashes in on her second three of the ball game. I mean, we had a clean look at that shot here, partner. It was right at the wing in front of us. That's the smoothest I have seen Cody McMahon's jump shot in three years. She looks so comfortable, so confident in her shot, and that's what you need for a team leader. Sub 30% on the three in her time at Ohio State as Maples draws a foul. And that right there is key 
for Cleveland State. Chris Kilsmeyer referred to Maples as a violent basketball player and means that in the nicest way possible in the sense that she just always creates chaos in the paint, never afraid to get there under the trees. And some teams need a player with that violent mentality, that killer instinct that you hear when you look at it, players like Michael Jordan or the Kobe Bryant, or even at this point, the Caitlin Clarks of the country. He's not afraid to just go out there, be a walking bucket, and go back and do their business. And the fact that he had said that about Maples and her time on the hardwood says a lot about her going forward and one of the reasons she was last year's player of the year and, and this season's player of the year potential on the watch list. And she split the pair of free throws. Lemila going to go to the stripe on the Buckeye side. Can we just talk about that multi-level passing that we just saw from Ohio State? It started from Gray up at the wing, right to the midsection of Ebony Walker, and then cuts it right back down to Lemila. Look at that. As you even get the cut ahead of Garairo, and the only thing you could do is push from the backside. That is beautiful ball placement from the Buckeyes. Garairo got Lemila on the arm, but the Buckeyes have been moving the ball very well tonight. First free throw off the back. The free throw shooting hasn't been awesome for either team, both shooting 50%, albeit in limited attempts. She splits the pair. So Lemila in her debut for the Buckeyes. She has three points taken away by Walker. Kennedy Cambridge into the game, stolen back by Purdue. Here she comes on the break and lays it off the rim Returned by Maples, missed the follow. Then there's some contact by Maples. Goes right back to the Buckeyes. Just a chaotic possession right there. It was just a scrum down low. And as soon as the ball really hits the ground, you don't know what to do. And it's just the clean strip away from Kennedy Cambridge for Purdue. And she goes up. That was open coverage. And that's the thing is when you miss that, sometimes you go, oh, man. But you got to focus on getting the rebound and having that second chance opportunity. And that's what allowed Ebony Walker to get down low and get the ball and keep it on her side. Green to Cambridge. Ebony Walker in her sixth year. In her third at Ohio State. Spent some time at Arizona State in Syracuse. Madison Green driving left. Loses it. Taken away by Hurley in the finish on the other end by Purdue. And that's the way you do it, is if you get Hurley to get in this game, the freshman out of Lincoln Prep High School in Pelham, Ontario, Canada, gets her first licks of action here on the college hardwood and, and helps it out in that transition defense to offense play. Strong defender in there, Walker outside Cambridge. Cleveland State all over it. Mid-range shot, no good for Walker. Garairo pushing it and slowing it down. Getting close to these final two minutes here, partner. I mean, it's within 20. Cleveland State, you can see that the way that they have made the adjustments under Chris Kilsmeyer has been helping them so far. Going with that isolation, getting Garairo the ball more, letting Purdue run it, and even getting Maples, who's one of five, get some touches. Garairo, good move to the basket. Got by the defender and cashed in for two. First Viking of the day with double-digit points. She's been a rock so far in this game, 10 for her. Kennedy Cambridge attacking and misses on the foul. She'll take two. And as much as she's not on the floor right now, Jelani Cambridge is wearing number 22. And if you've had the opportunity to watch Ebony Walker the past couple of years, she's now 55. She was number 22. She gave up that number to a freshman. And that says a lot, not only about her character, but the trust that the team has in Jelani to go forward and bring that spotlight onto this Buckeye team that already has some national championship aspirations in the past couple seasons. Buckeyes were one of the top seeds in the Big Ten tournament last year as well. Lost to Maryland in their only game and went to the NCAA tournament, lost in the round of 32 as a two seed to number seven Duke. So. Buckeyes just looking for more as the number 14 team in the nation. Diving on the floor is Kennedy Cambridge. And her defensive impact in this game can't be understated. It definitely cannot. The way that they play, they're so aggressive on the court and on the ground especially. When there's a loose ball, you never know what's going to happen. You have to put your body on the line to help your team get back into a game like this. And sometimes plays like that and the effort like that can spark a rally. 
You can tell she's been fighting for this playing time. Redshirted all of last year. Played at Kentucky her freshman year as Purdue fires off front rim. Minute 30 to go in this second quarter. Madison Green operating up top. Eurostep swatted by Hernandez. Block number five on the night. Misses that one. Green gets it back. Theory from deep. Strong rebound by Sarah Hurley, too. Out in full court. Cleveland State's got numbers. Purdue for three. No good. Less than a minute to go here at the Schottenstein Center. Cambridge back to green. Catch and shoot. Rolls in there. Big shot for Madison Green. It had that backspin going to it as well. For a second, it looks like it might go off that back iron. And it gets the lucky roll and goes through. And now you just got to play some trap defense for the final 37 seconds. That three got the Buckeyes up by 20. Here's Green again. Stepping through, missing the layup. Tries to tap it back and hooked Guerrero. And you can tell the defense is somewhat shifted. It started with a 2-3 zone, and they're now just trying to fill the extra gaps and fill the lanes if you're Cleveland State, especially with how aggressive the Buckeyes have been going to the bane. You'll see here, Sarah Guerrero, the only thing she can do is stand in front. She gets the rebound, of course, goes off. It's that off-ball attempt from Green to push her forward and get the Vikings into the foul, or into the bonus, I should say, into the foul line. Both teams in the bonus late in quarter number two. Sarah Guerrero, leading scorer tonight for Cleveland State. Rattles in. Nice crowd on hand tonight in Columbus, Ohio on a Tuesday evening. Man, it's just good to have basketball back. I mean, we've been talking about it for a long time. Just having hoops in front of you, it just makes you smile. The two men's basketball teams opened up their seasons yesterday as well. Cleveland State losing to Michigan, Ohio State beating Texas all the way over in Las Vegas. I mean, that was a pretty big win for the Buckeyes as well, especially with the way that they were unranked. Looked at one of the top 30 teams in the country, though, and, and very similar with this women's team, expected to be one of the best teams in the conference and in the country. They've got a really good combination of basketball teams here in Columbus. Theory falls, but a foul is called, so she'll go to the line. We'll go for what should be the one and one. Fouled by Kobe Maples on it. Looks like she might have got her with a trip up. Maples up to three fouls on the day, so she'll just shoot two, not the one and one. Maples is one of five. It only has three points currently. Three turnovers and... Three personal fouls, very uncharacteristic. Theory misses both. Purdue pushing the pace, has to lay it up. And she travels, but she's hobbling after the shot. Looked like she just might have taken an awkward step walking off the court. Is that trap defense going forward, trying to get that final shot off. You just try to close somebody out, and sometimes that forces you to take a misstep. 0.2 seconds, that'll do it for half number one, Ohio State. A dominant half of basketball, 42 to 24. Buckeyes shooting 45% from long range, and Austin, I think that's been the key. Box out capabilities. That's one thing you have to think about. The way she can hold back an opposition trying to get after her and claw and get the rebound, she's just able to hold herself back with her, her length and ability to get the rebounds, and that's why she's done as well as she has. Both teams trotting out their starting lineups to start half number two and quarter number three. Inbound goes to Jelani Cambridge at the keys to start things out. And half number two, 14 first half points for the freshman from Montverde Academy, where she played her senior year of high school ball. Cambridge up top. 
Buckeyes continue to move the ball around. Here's Petty, post-touch, rolls it in. The athleticism in the touch of Petty on display here throughout this game. I think it's that drop step that she's really been working well. She can get into the post, and then she moves herself and finds space. Confident take from Destiny Leo, cashing in with the three ball. And if you start to see more of that from Destiny Leo, that's how a game could get very close very quickly. Leo, her first shot made of the game, believe it or not. Average about 21 points a game in the six games she played. Missed the majority of the season with an injury. McMahon fade away, rolls in there. And the Cody McMahon of the past might have tried to cut to the paint, go baseline, and do a reverse layup. That McMahon realizes she was on a mismatch and has a little fade away on the right block. Beautiful shot. Really improved that jump shot this year in that offseason. Very smooth stroke. Purdue, quick handoff with Reisma. Maples operating left side. Guerrero cashes it in. Sarah Guerrero on the mid-range jumper. And some of the men's team is starting to trickle their way through to watch just to the right of us. Got back from Vegas just a couple of short hours ago. Watching their team on the opposite side of things, the women's team, number 14 in the country. They got a victory in their season debut. Cody McMahon, three threes in the first game of the season. Cody McMahon, not necessarily known for the three-point shooting. She's been known to attack the basket and get a lot of her points in the paint or the mid-range, but she's been incredible on the perimeter today. I mean, making that adjustment is one of the best ways she's been able to get to the cup because if she can now show that she can shoot and then also drive to the lane like she traditionally does. She's headstrong when doing that, and that's tough to stop any player. Three threes, that's actually a career high for Cody McMahon in a game. Has a handful of games hitting two threes, but usually doesn't take more than three or four in a game. Fake from Leo, driving, and she finishes. Fouls on the ground, so I do not believe it'll be an and one opportunity. Doesn't get the continuation. So just a foul on the floor. Leo's going to inbound. So Destiny Leo, 2023 Horizon League Player of the Year, shot just under 39% from deep and got about 18 points a game and was on the way to an even better season last year. Pull up three, Michaela Purdue hits off the rim. Here comes Cambridge in a hurry down the right side. Right, left, cross into the lane, lays it in with the contact. We heard about the lightning speed from Jelani Cambridge earlier today while watching shoot around. Even got to see some of it in this half court set they were going through. Now you get to see her run the full 94, and she does it in about four and a half seconds and finishes with contact. I mean, look at this. Third defense, cuts the way, goes with the dribble, switches arms again up with the right and off the window. Has a really tight handle as well. Able to keep the dribble through contact like we just saw. And just what a talent she is. And the Buckeyes, they truly got a great one. Firing it up ahead. Here's Purdue, left side. Maya Perry coming in for the first time today. Off She's ball sealing down off. Catch and shoot three, Purdue, no good. McMahon up ahead, Petty. And she walked with it before taking that first dribble, so going right back to the Vikings. I think Maya Moore, who's now checked into the game, the first thing she did, it was an off-ball screen, and instead of moving up on the defender, she stayed back and was one-on-one -on -one in the paint against Jelani Cambridge. That was a mismatch that the Vikings needed to go after, and if they could do it again, they should. Might look for that switch again. She's gonna try and screen on Cody McMahon. She stays with Maples, who pulls up and drops that one in for three. A beautiful stroke from the top of the key. Cambridge with just under seven minutes to go in the quarter. Buckeyes keeping their starting five out there. Down the lane, pull up, Cambridge no good. Second miss of the game for Jelani Cambridge. She's at 17 points, four rebounds, two assists, two blocks, and four steals, filling up the stat sheet in her debut. Purdue down the lane in a hurry. Maya Moore blocked by Petty. There aren't many times 
Connor, you can look at a player and go, they are slowly working their way to a five by five. And Jelani Cambridge is trying to do that in her first collegiate game. Open three missed, more on the rebound. Purdue hesitates, drives, more. Shot that one through, Theory's contact. Shooting foul and Moore is gonna get her first opportunity and she brings a lot of physicality to the game. A couple of hard screens early and almost finishing through contact. Her six foot two frame, the Milwaukee Wisconsin junior. Transferred from Seattle University of last year. I mean, she led the Red Hawks in points per game, rebounds, blocks, assists, and field goals. And she's not afraid to be a bruiser down low either. She had multiple double digit games, including a couple of 25 plus. About 13 points per game, seven and a half rebounds for the Southpaw. The Milwaukee native rattles at home. 52-33, Cleveland State keeping it to within 20. Ohio State trying to blow this game open. McMahon drives right, spins around, rattles out. Cambridge right there. Lobs it in for Petty, off glass. Naples controls. Matched up with Chance Gray, walling up and forcing the miss. Solid defense by the Oregon transfer, who was Pac-12 All-Defense her freshman year. Cambridge stepping through the lane and floating it home. And one. Defenses look great the past couple of series, going back and forth, able to say, hey, who's going to win this head-to-head -head, uh, when you're really getting hard-nosed? And all you got to do right now, give it to 22. Go to the freshman. She drives her way through, does a little step right to left, and then floats it up with the right hand. It looks beautiful while doing it. A lethal scorer at all levels of the basketball court. I mean, it's just a beautiful shot to not only realize that you can take that, but feel confident going with that beautiful of a layup. And the free throw drops in up to 20 points on the night. Eight for 10 from the floor, two for three from deep. And she's hit both of her free throws. Purdue, transition three, catch. 10 points for Michaela Purdue now. One of eight from three, four for 13 overall, but still getting the shots when she has her open looks and starts to feel confident, that's a problem if you're the Buckeye defense. She shot around 37% from deep last year. Gray misses the tray. Leo pushing the offense, gives it up to Maples. Two Horizon League players of the year. Left side for Purdue, fires away. Two straight threes for Michaela Purdue. Don't let her get hot. She luckily had Chance Gray go too fast. Cambridge got in the lane and drew some more contact. Makes something happen almost every time she touches the ball. And there's gonna be a quick timeout on the floor. Here in the third quarter, we're gonna go to a quick break here on Big Ten Plus. Cleveland State six threes of their own, and they're on a 6-0 run. And one of the reasons for that is because of Cody McMahon and the way that she has held herself on the floor and how she's really gone through everything, feeling confident with going for those three-pointers, going with the layups, everything involved with it. And then that leadership as well is how she's been able to talk to her team, very young team, one of the few players on this roster for the Buckeyes that is not afraid to go out and just say it. And that sometimes lets a team go, okay, they're gonna be honest with you, good, bad, the ugly, and that can allow a team to feel more confident and comfortable together once you hit the hardwood. Ava Watson out there now, and there's Taylor Theory 
Talked to Kevin McGuff, and he said he's challenging Theory and Madison Green to be more vocal leaders this year. Always been great at leading by example, but now to kind of really hammer it. I mean, you talked about that lead by example committee. Taylor Theory's one of them. Four triples tonight for Cody McMahon, extending that career high. And McMahon also now leading by example. Feeling confident, getting the hot hand, going from all sides beyond the arc. And she's got a big smile on her face while doing it. McMahon flashing some outside shooting that we just haven't seen from her yet in her career. Career about 25% three-point shooter. Leo slid her feet. Ball goes back to the Buckeyes. And Austin this year, if Cody McMahon can keep shooting like this or just anything close to it, that opens up a whole new element to their offense. I mean, the, the realms that you can think of of where this offense go could be unlimited. If you can let Cody McMahon feel comfortable shooting and have a freshman like Jelani Cambridge keep doing that, how are you going to be able to stop a team that can cut to the lane, go to the low post, go to the high post, kick it back outside, and really do whatever they want to do on the offensive side of things? Things just look effortless for the kid from Nashville, Cambridge. Maples right to left. Leo's open in the corner. Buckeyes playing great trap defense. Maples pulls up and it's off front rim. Here comes Cambridge. Left, right, Euro, and the finish. Jelani Cambridge, oh my goodness. You got some of the members of the football team and basketball team cheering her on. And when you're a freshman, you got 26, you got the fancy footwork and the silk touch, who's gonna stop you? Solid move from Purdue. She drew some contact on the shot, but you can't say enough good about Jelani Cambridge, Austin. <laughs> I mean, Partner, I feel like we've talked it to death at this point. I'm running out of words to really describe what I'm watching. 26 points, five rebounds, four steals, two blocks, and three assists. She has been all that they've expected and then some. Just a shot in the arm of this Ohio State offense. I mean, there's been a lot of good freshman play just the past two days from the men's and women's side of college basketball. Saw Junie Mobley. John Mobley Jr. for the Ohio State men's team hit four threes in yesterday's contest against Texas. Took a couple that weren't too far from the logo and comfortably, and Cambridge carries a similar confidence on the floor. I mean, when you're shooting it from, what, 27 feet at that point, and you just keep going and it keeps dropping, the basket looks like it keeps getting bigger and bigger, and then eventually it, it seems that the only person that could stop you is the shot clock. So Jelani gets a break, her sister Kennedy is in. Ava Watson from the corner rims out. Lemmy Law on the follow. No good and a foul. Ebony Walker in the game as well as Madison Green, a handful of subs for the Buckeyes. Allows the traditional starting five to get some rest in the final two minutes, two minutes, 45 seconds or so. Lemmy's Laws looked really comfortable down in the low post. And sometimes transitioning to this level of collegiate basketball, especially when you are a bruiser down in the paint, getting close to the restricted area, you see sometimes you get a little bit more travel calls. You're not as dominant as you once thought you were, maybe in practice or in some of the other places that you've played. But, I mean, Lemmy lies. she sinks them both there, and still she looks really good with her footwork. She's playing well defensively, and her offense looks good too. Leo high arcing three, drops through. Only three shots taken tonight from Destiny Leo, all of them threes. But back to Lemila, stat line's been looking good. Five points, five boards, two blocks in her debut. Kennedy Cambridge driving and gets the foul call. I mean, the start of that play, as you saw it with Lemila, she was a half step away from starting what could be a potential travel call. As you saw her go across the Big Ten logo, last second, she swings it outside. I mean, you'll see it right here. And that's what it gets to. So it'll end up getting to Kennedy Cambridge, who now has it after the feed from Madison Green. And you get a shot at two. Kelsey Reynolds made that call. One of the three referees in this game, along with Mark Resch and Angie Enland. 66 to 45. Ohio State's in the bonus. 
Six fouls committed by Cleveland State in the quarter. Maples down the right side. Running the offense most of this game for Cleveland State. Purdue's got it, looking to make a move. Kicks out, Leo for three. Off the back of the rim, fighting for the rebound. Moore putting it up, blocked. And on the follow, Garairo misses. Kennedy Cambridge pushing the pace, kicks it out. Watson has it, penetrating. Green, Walker short corner, Jay rattles in. I've seen that shot before. Anytime you can get Ebony Walker in the short corner on the block, it seems that it is effortless. Nine out of 10 times that basket's gonna go in, especially when you're that wide open. Leo for three, won't go. Madison Green with it. Watson fires from deep. Maples turned on the Jets down the other side, hooping the harm, and one, Colby Maples. She did it in a one-on-two spot as well. It looked like there could have been a chance to kick it out to Michaela Purdue in the corner. And you see Gother realizing, hey, I'm going to hit it. Purdue, I mean, she's wide open going in that low wing. And hey, when you see a potential of a three-point play and not having to shoot it from beyond 24 feet, you're going to take it. Maples transferred in from Grambling State before her junior year. She's in her senior year now. She completes the three-point play. Here comes Cowley Howard. Howard coming in for Sarah Garairo. I mean, garairo has been playing a lot of this game. She's really gotten vocal. You allow Cauley Howard to now get in and get a couple of minutes back on the floor. I mean, the final minute here before it's starting the final 10. You want to have your traditional five have fresh legs for the final 10 minutes, if you can, especially in a game like this. Lemila looking for someone to pass to. Walker handoff green from the corner. That one's through. Ohio State up to eight threes, shooting 47%. And they made five of their last seven field goals. And it seems most of them have been for beyond the arc. Oh, big rip by Madison Green on the floor, hustling for it. Stays with Cleveland State. Up by 25 points, this hustle from the Buckeyes just doesn't stop. I mean, especially with that defense, the way that they play it, it's so pesky. It seems that any time you look a little bit too long, there's blood in the water and the Sharks are going to go feed it. Ebony Walker deflecting the inbound up ahead. Kennedy Cambridge has some room and lays it in. Her first field goal made as a Buckeye. Talked about after that red shirt last year, the year prior she played at Kentucky. Her and Asia Petty actually got a year together with the Wildcats of the SEC. Played back in that 2023 season. Five seconds to go. Purdue's got to put it up. One second fires and drew another foul on the three. Second time we've seen her do that. Point two seconds remaining. 16 points for Purdue tonight. She's the leading scorer for the Vikings, her and Sarah Guerrero. Only two in double digits. Guerrero has 14. The third foul as well for Kennedy Cambridge. Energy from the crowd still pretty high late into this game as well. So Springfield, Ohio kid, Michaela Purdue, not too far from Columbus. She was the Horizon League Newcomer of the Year last year. All Horizon League first team. She came in from Division II Glenville State and hits all three. And that ends your quarter right there. Ohio State up big 75 to 51 to end the frame here. We'll be back with fourth quarter action soon on Big Ten Plus.
75-51. Buckeyes up big in the season debut at the Schottenstein Center. The first basketball we've seen here in a long time, Austin. I mean, it's just good to see. We've been waiting for basketball for quite a long time. If you want to look for the women's side of things, it was that Duke game. And for the Buckeyes on the men's side of things, it was the NIT. So it has been quite a bit of time. But Hoops being back, I mean, that's a sign of getting to that midsection of winner. Corner three chance, Gray splashes in. First points as a Buckeye, one of five at that point from beyond the arc and one of six in total. Five assists though. So still making a contribution to the offense. Making things happen as a playmaker. Hernandez comes up to screen. I mean, Buckeyes are shooting 50% from beyond the arc here, partner. We don't normally see that. Howard throws it up, gets it right back, and cashes in on the follow. Effort still high with these Vikings. How could you not be? I mean, it's that slow grind. It's the momentum building. You get one good shot, maybe then you get a second. Maybe you get a steal or a turnover, and quickly it starts to move in the sense and the direction of your side. First foul on Asia Petty. Rebound snared by Cambridge, finally, who's down there in a hurry. High off glass, rolls in. What can she do? I mean, she's shrugging her shoulders already. How often do you see that from a player, especially of a freshman? So you see her go here, gets the contact off Maples, chuck him up. Hey, why not? The balance to be able to hang in the air and finish that. Incredible. 29 tonight. I mean, one shy of 30, my goodness. Cambridge guarding Maples. Figs goes downhill, Purdue back to Maples, into the lane, lefty lay goes. Cambridge back at the keys. Given her all the time they can in this first game to get her feet under her, and she has certainly done that. I think she's just figuring out what shoes she wants to wear at this point. I mean, seriously, she's she's got the KDs on it, and just the, the style points from that as well, and it helps with the game. Oh, Purdue, deep three. And that's the potential with Purdue. You see 22 points for her tonight. That's a sneaky 22 as well. If you're not watching quickly, she's just getting up with the free throw, seven of eight. A couple three balls as well. Theory trying to rip that one away from Hernandez, commits the foul, and they're gonna call that a jump ball, actually. If that was a foul, Theory would, would have been out of the game. She has four right now. 8.14 to go, 83 to 58. Purdue lets it fly. In there again. Up to 25 points. I mean, I said it about seven or eight minutes ago. If you get her hot with one shot, what are you going to do to stop her, even if you put your best defender and Taylor Theory on her? And then she made her second. And then slowly her third. She went to the line a couple times. It's gotten here now to the fourth quarter, and she's still moving. Ball bouncing around for Ohio State. Zipping through, and Petty tries the reverse draws a foul, but Michaela Purdue, she is going to be a force to be reckoned with in the Horizon League, just like last year. She can go and get a bucket. And there's a reason she was newcomer of the year last year and all Horizon first team. And one of the stories about her, she was at a, a small community college before getting to Cleveland State. And on her first visit with her family and Chris Killsmeyer, he had said, hey, look, if you want to play at the highest level of the Horizon League, you come here and we'll start and just keep on winning. And normally after that, a player might go home, talk it out with family. Nope, Mikhail Purdue said, all right, cool, I'm in. Let's commit. And she committed on the spot to Cleveland State. And Chris Kilsmeyer said that was one of the best days, or a good day, I should say, for his program as Purdue gets another bucket. I mean, for a coach who finds love in the game of player growth, and watching these young women just become better people as they play. He said, that's one of the reasons I do it. Gray 
splashes that one in. Second three ball of the game for the Oregon transfer. Was more of a facilitator earlier on in the game, but really showing that shot making ability. Purdue probing, loses it. Howard on the floor gives it back to Purdue. Floater rattles in, and Michaela Purdue is quickly up to 25, 29 points. And Cleveland State has made their last six shot attempts. I mean, she's got that quick draw even when it comes to a 10 footer. Using the strong hand, gets it quick, moves it belt high, and goes up. Scoop doesn't go for McMahon. Ohio State staying aggressive. Purdue staying aggressive as well. Loses it to Chance Gray in a hurry on the fast break. Able to lay it in after getting past Leo. Leo gets the screen from Hernandez, driving with the left, switches hands. Nice finish by the veteran. I mean, as much as you see the games at 22 and the, the differential, it's playing like it is way closer. As you have main person on ball against Johnny Cambridge and Michaela Perdue, and then the supporting cast around them, helping them on the offensive and defensive side. Kick out for Theory. Cambridge drives, fades away. What do you expect at this point? Well, now 30 plus. But if you would ask me at the beginning of the game, I'd say, hey, just try to find your feet from out under you and see if you can really hit the ground running. And I think she's done a little bit more than hit the ground running. I think she might be driving a car on the ground at this point. Steals it away. Here comes Cambridge. Dimes up Theory, lays it in. Forces the timeout. And Jelani Cambridge on a diet of pull up mid ranges and just overall tough shots is 12 for 14 for 31 points, has six rebounds and six assists. When she entered the portal and committed to Cleveland State, there wasn't anybody happier than Coach Chris Kielsmeyer who recruited her out of high school. It was hard to keep a talent like that on the bench, and she played in all 35 games on the year, starting the last 29, and finished the season with a career best 17 points per game. So the Buckeyes definitely have to keep, out, keep an eye out on her. She has 29 points right now, and the Vikings are definitely glad to have her on their side. Back to you guys. It's been a big game for Ohio State up by a large amount on Cleveland State. But for Chris Kilsmeyer's group, I think there's a lot of positives to look at. And one of those is Michaela Perdue's play tonight. I mean, what else could you ask for? The way she has looked, it started off a little rocky, of course, first game of the season. But she has found her footing and found it quickly. And no surprise with a grad student out of Springfield, Ohio. 29 points. And it's looked really, really solid, especially within the last 10 minutes. It's finding your stroke and finding it at a good time because you want to really build that momentum going into your next couple games. Next game that they have is at Chicago State for the Cleveland State Vikings. That's on the ninth, so only in a short day, or a short few days before they really get back into their play. Another timeout on the floor. We're going to take a very short break here at Big Ten Plus.
93-67, to 67. Buckeyes up big, shooting 53% from the floor and from three-point range. Austin, they have been dominant scoring the basketball. I mean, when you can feel that lights out with your shooting, of course, the numbers to back it up as well, who's going to stop you other than yourselves or your potential game plan that you have cooking up? But at this point, if you're Coach McGuff, you just kind of letting it happen you know you you have the schemes that you want to run depending on the situation offensively or de defensively which personnel you have on the floor but it's also right now you're gonna let your team just go out there and work it and of course Johnny Cambridge now on the bench but if that's gonna be the end of her day partner a 31 point collegiate experience in her first game with the Buckeyes she scored from all three levels, only missed two shots, and was just on fire, to put it simply. Here's Madison Green. Good to see her back out on the court. Struggled with a lot of injuries in her time at Ohio State as Lemmy Lock lays it home. I mean, you talk about going through with the injuries with Madison Green, but still, she had the option to come back after last year with the, this being her final year. And she said, I want to play. I want to really go out there and help the team grow. And then when you realize that you can have a freshman like Jelani Cambridge that you could take under your wing and help you grow. I mean, whatever has been going on, of course, the, the pure skill, the number two recruit in the 2024 class is helping. But just going through the practices, you can see her confidence, her quickness, and the team around her is really helping her gel and get ready for this game. Tell she was ready as ever coming out here today. Sarah Hurley and Maya Moore in the game for Cleveland State. Not that Maya Moore, the WNBA legend. So when I, I first looked it up, I went, are they related in any way? And then also I went into the depths of it all. Foul called Howard going to go to the strike. And I started going through. Maya Moore, that being M-A-Y-A, the, the WNBA legend, I started going through her stats. I never realized how dominant she really was. I mean, she was, she's been incredible for her time and one of the most heralded women's basketball players ever. I mean, the 2014 MVP, three-time All-Star MVP, four-time champ. A steals champ in 2018, the scoring champ in 2014, rookie of the year in 2011. How, how much time do we got so I can keep going through some of these accolades here, partner? I mean, she only played for one team, the Minnesota Lynx from 2011 to 2019. She did this in eight seasons. She was always so fun to watch, could score from everywhere, and especially just off the bounce. She's a very talented ball player. Green takes it up for Ohio State. No starters in for Ohio State. Two in for Cleveland State. Purdue and Maples remain in the game. Watson, corner three. Rattles out. Tough rebound by Ebony Walker, out muscling the defense. We heard that Ebony Walker was going to be on the floor a lot more this year, and she's really muscling up, getting those, and going up after the tough rebound. Kevin McGuff calls a timeout. With three minutes and 30 seconds to go. 97 to 67. This is only a 30 second timeout. So I think we're going to stay here for a second. What have you liked from Ohio State that's gotten them to this point in this game? I mean, it's been the togetherness. And as much as it's been 54% from the field, 50% from three, 68 from the line, and of course, forcing a lot of those turnovers. This is a team that it starts, it starters, two transfers, uh, and a freshman. So there was a, some question marks of, hey, is this Ohio State team this year going to be able to somewhat live up to the hype? And I'll put that in air quotes, of course. Live up to the hype of the teams of the past couple of years. And it looks like they've been playing together for, I mean, goodness, throughout a, a certain date, they've been playing together, it looked like, for months, if not years, because of how confident they are. And they're doing this against a very solid Cleveland State team, receiving votes in the USA Today coaches poll as Lemilot finishes another one off the Cambridge feed. I mean, CSU is projected to win this Horizon League season, and that's the first time in the school's history that they have had 
that go to them in the preseason poll. I mean, that says a lot about this team and how Chris Kilsmeyer has helped his squad go through in the past seven years here. He's built this program up very well in the recent years. And look at the hustle on the glass from the Vikings, but it goes back to the Buckeyes. Here comes Kennedy Cambridge down the lane, slowing it down, misses the layup. But well, they're going to call a foul. She'll go to the line. And you could see her face. She was not necessarily happy that she missed that one. The, the 10 0 scoring run for the Buckeyes in the last three minutes or so, or, you know, just south of three minutes. But still, is, I like Coach McGuff going a little bit deeper into his bench. So you see, he's not afraid to go to Ava Watson, the freshman. Elsa Lemila, Kennedy Cambridge, Ebony Walker. Of course, you knew Madison Green was going to be one of the first few off the bench. But still, early on in the season, you want everyone to gain confidence and, and get their sea legs back after either not playing or maybe being on limited minutes or a couple months off. And I think this is the best time to do it. Of course, you are up by a tremendous amount at this point in the game. But the final 230, you still play it like you're down by five. That's been their mentality. Just play to that final buzzer no matter the score. There's Philippa Gula handling her first time in the game. Crosses behind the back. Needs to put this one up at the end, but throws it to Lemila, who pushes the break at the center position. Pull up jumper from Watson, drops through. And another Buckeye first, her first career points in the scarlet and gray. That also shows Lemila, she's not afraid to run the points. I mean, sometimes you see the big go, ah, uh, you know, you get a little ball shy. When that happens is that's a ball that's going to stay with Cleveland State. But you saw the way that she got that. It went right to her. Of course, probably the easiest steal you could have in your entire life. And at some points, you'll see the big go, I just need to look for the first option near me. No, she took it, moved in stride, and hit Watson on the right side block. Look confident, bringing it down the court. Sarah Hurley in the middle, kicks out. There's Fagan, misses the three. Minute 30 left to go in this contest. In-state matchup, these two teams only a couple hours. Just drive up 71 and you're in Cleveland. Strong block by Maya Moore. Just cut that one away from Kennedy Cambridge. Grace Ellis back in the game as well, who saw some pretty early time, but hadn't come back into the game until just now. It also showed they took out Ellis, or put in Ellis, I should say, for Destiny Leo early on in the game, because she had only played a couple minutes. She missed 29 games in last season. But now at this point, it was more of a, all right, Destiny Leo starting to find herself, and now with the final minute, you now are going to look back at this game if you're Ohio State and go, okay, it's a great start to the season. And if you're CSU, you're going to also look at this and go, hey, look, we're facing a top 15 team in the country. And as the game went on and progressed, they started to feel the confidence flow through them, the togetherness. The shots were going up and going through. They forced turnovers, they played good defense, and they spaced the ball out. And that shows a lot in the team and their confidence and their resiliency at the start of a season. Overall, a success for the Buckeyes tonight. They don't play for another week. They've got Charlotte right here on Big Ten Plus at 6 o'clock next Tuesday. Thrown up by Gula. Draws the call on Madison Green. The rest of the December looks like this for the Buckeyes. They go to Belmont and then make a trip to Athens to play against the Ohio Bobcats. And then it's Bowling Green at home in a pair of games against Old Dominion and Utah State at the Daytona Beach Classic. And then you always look at that early Big Ten game in the season. You have Illinois on the eighth back here at the Schottenstein Center. Should be a fun matchup. Time running down for Ohio State. They're just going to dribble it out and secure a big, big victory in game number one of the season. What a way to tip it up for the Buckeyes.
How do you start your year with a dominant W? And that can allow a team like you talk about. The Buckeyes have a full week off until their next game. And that shows that, hey, you could go into practices for the next week and go, hey, look, we are going to try to shoot for this level of success. But there is also a lot to learn from a game like this as well, because you're facing one of the best teams in the Horizon League. And they play a couple more of them throughout the season.